All right, so by analogy, here's my dual sport motorcycle, which I've had for three years now. Probably ridden about 30, 40 minutes. And so that's kind of funny. I put a new seat on it, did all electronics, fiddled around with tons of gear. But you know what I haven't done? Is I haven't went out and actually practiced riding it. It's kind of interesting because it's a lot of the ways that I think about kind of the hunting industry and people getting the hunting is that we buy all the shit, we buy all the little gadgets, we work on everything except for our skill set. Modern hunting gear is a blessing and a curse. The fabrics now used in mainstream hunting clothing, the engineering of the tents, sleeping pads, sleeping bags, the coatings and technology and the optics, the accuracy of just cheap off the shelf rifles, all else held equal. All this stuff makes us way more capable hunters than our predecessors. But guys, the issue arises when we look at hunting gear as the cheat code, then we aren't holding all else equal. Instead, we are trying to replace skill building and experience with products. This is what the hunting gear industry wants. They don't want the one-time purchase from you. They want you on their titty, basically on the subscription model. You know, psychologically thinking that their new camo pattern or the new backcountry energy licorice or whatever is the only thing that can make you a better hunter. This is when gear becomes a hindrance and not an asset. This isn't about shitting on anyone. I'm as guilty as anybody, but I've developed a sense for when the marginal value of screwing with the next best gadget, pants style or whatever, just isn't worth the squeeze. I also recognize the negative consequences of constantly changing things in your gear kit. As I discuss this topic, I'm going to give you guys a look into what really goes on in the hunting gear business. Stuff that makes everyone, including yours truly, biased in their recommendations. But more importantly, I'll give you guys some ideas on how to think about building your optimal equipment and clothing setup and how to not let gear dependence and gear infatuation take over your path as a hunter. All right, guys, so let's get to the point here. So in an imaginary world, one where I have unlimited disposable income, why is there a problem with purchasing the newest and greatest gear all the time? The fundamental problem with this is that you are taking on an endeavor that has tons of uncontrollable variables and you're trying to get better at it. That's really hard in its own right, let alone when you when you start changing things. So now you're adding in additional variables with every new piece of gear. I'm just going to give you guys some stuff that I've heard over the years to kind of give you a flavor of what I'm talking about. My new base layer is chafing the inside of my thighs. The new turrets on my gun were click nine click. Sure, that's why I missed. These new gaiters are hurting my calves. I didn't sleep last night because my new sleeping bag is way colder than my old one. I guess I'm just gonna hold my spotting scope on top of the tripod. I forgot the right adapter. Oh no, my new headlamp. The button was left on. It's not kind of tongue in cheek here guys but the stuff's endless obviously this is part of the deal for new guys getting into backcountry hunting you know you got to fine tune your setup which is just part of the process but I'm talking a litany of this shit from hunters okay so here's the gear framework for you guys to use as a beginner just when you're putting your gear together use gear lists that are posted online outfitters guides you know influencers that go on similar hunts as you're going on there's this negative connotation with YouTube or Instagram influencers if they're going on hunts that you go on, use their gear list. I used to put a lot of thought in my gear list that I gave to hunters, and I had my bias towards certain companies, but I never put something on a list that I hadn't used extensively and had good luck with. If I had put something on there that was a crap product, I would I would have heard about it. And I think most people are in that case. So you can use that st those those lists out there as a baseline uh, to start. Okay. The next big question is how much money should a beginner spend? This is an impossible question for me to answer definitively, but hopefully. This this framework will help. If you're serious about hunting, I would abide by the buy once, cry once mentality. This is particularly the case with hard goods, right? So packs, optics, tents, etc. In these categories specifically, you get what you pay for. Now, having said that, the price to value ratio is not linear. Think about it this way. A complete optic setup that costs $2,000 is probably seven to eight times better than one that costs, you know, $800 to $1,000. But an $8,000 package of optics is probably only 15, 20% better than a $4,000 set of optics. I've got a great video, a couple of them that goes through you know kind of what I use in terms of optics and some detailed thoughts you can check that out but the main idea is if disposable income isn't an issue for you and spending big bucks isn't gonna take away from you know money you can spend on hunting then go go big and get the best stuff now if you're on a budget just use your judgment you know get something good 
where there's some value and then you know don't let it take away from your you know your opportunities to go hunting so a couple other takeaways and tips for setting up your gear as a beginner make sure that you take care of the living slash camping part of your gear and have that optimized so you're comfortable in the mountains the more comfortable you are with your sleeping bag sleeping pad tent the longer you'll stay in the field so don't skimp on that stuff okay that stuff's way more important than you know the extra 10 percent marginal you're going to spend on a rifle you know on clothing guys there's three or four well-known mountain hunting clothing companies we all know who they're who they are and honestly there's marginal functional differences in their stuff all the guys make good stuff from what i've seen i've tried it all and I'll touch on this in a minute but the short takeaway is don't spend hundreds of hours deciding deciding on layers okay lots of guys waste a ton of money on that on clothing buy on fit and then buy on material preferences the other quick one I'll touch on is bow and rifle setups here you need to focus on reliability all right so focus on things like the site you know the sights your scope your rings keep those simple and reliable you don't want to buy complication you want to buy confidence the last point I'll make for beginners is to make Make sure and try to use all your gear before your hunts. Don't be putting up your new tent for the first time after a seven mile hike into the elk woods, okay? That's not a good plan. Use it beforehand. Get all that worked out beforehand so you're not worried about it when you're in the field. When you are starting out, just realize that getting gear dialed, particularly, you know, on gear centric hunts like mountain backpack hunts, is part of the skill set you're building. Now on the other side of this discussion, after a few hunts, you should has, have a setup that is dialed and you are confident in. Once you're beyond the getting things set up phase, you need to mentally create a very high bar for gear changes. Most guys have a very low one. You need to focus on the higher value things and this is where the conflict starts. When I say higher value, I'm really talking about experience in the field and building that skill set. Going through and changing the camo pattern of all your hunting clothing is way, way less valuable than going scouting or glassing for the day. Taking a trip to the mountains to practice shooting off realistic rest, that's way more value than upgrading your rifle stock. Extending your elk hunt by three days is way more value than upgrading the, you know, your backpack's waist belt. I think you guys get the point when I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say here. The problem is that all the smart guys in the hunting industry are selling gear and clothing. See, they actually know how to make money. The gear business is scalable and high margin. Most of the rest of the industry isn't. Outfitters and guys, including me historically, are the dumb asses of the industry. Outfitting is a lot of work, tons of risk, and little pay. So these guys in the gear business know what they're doing. Guys, don't get me wrong, in the hunting gear business, the clothing guys, the gear guys, the gun guys, they are 99% great human beings. I've been blessed to interact with a lot of them over the years. And like most hunters, they're awesome. But they are also intelligent people and they use those brains to make you think their products are gonna make you a better hunter. They don't make a margin on your self-improvement as a hunter. They make a margin on products. So years ago, guys, I interacted with a very high up individual in, in one of the mountain hunting clothing brands. And I asked him, why are you guys always developing these new camo patterns? You know, how do you develop those? I thought they had some sort of scientific method of, you know, the, the deer or elk can see this pattern less than another one or whatever. And that, kind of factors in but what he said to me will always stay in my mind and he said look cliff we make camo patterns for people not game okay we make camo patterns that people like the look of and they will buy because of that look and that will always stick in my mind because i think that's true of a, of a lot of the clothing and just in general it's a good anecdote for you to to look at hunting gear through and of course guys here's the dirty little secret that all of you guys already know every guide outfitter instagram influencer or whatever rarely pays retail for gear i paid retail prices for less than five percent of what i used over the years and a big proportion of it i got for free does this create bias yes it does but not quite how you guys think it does guys that hunt a lot will expose product weaknesses and they aren't going to recommend crap to their clients or followers in almost all cases reputable folks people who spend a lot of time in the field don't recommend things they don't like I never once did that yeah there's the moral component but there's also the backlash component I'm not gonna tell 150 hunting clients to use a certain piece of garbage gear because any of the problems they have is gonna come back on me and my reputation 
However, when several comparable types of gear, clothing are available, and there are a lot of situations where stuff is similar, guys, in clothing and other gear, in those cases, I would recommend gear from companies that had given me gear to try and had helped my crew out and geared them up with stuff. I'm unapologetic about that. There's always a sense of reciprocity when people are good to you. This is like every other industry on the planet. The other thing is, is we all have friends in the business and we have friends that we want to help out. The hunting industry is no different than that. And nowadays there's even a cultural bias in this industry like there is in a lot of industries. There were cases where I edged to recommending gear, you know, a certain piece of gear because I liked some of the intangibles that brand represented. There's nothing wrong with supporting companies for these intangibles, you know, made in the USA or there's certain causes they give money to, any of that stuff. In the US we have less of a defined tradition when it comes to hunting. You know, we don't wear funky fox hunting uniforms. You know, we're more utilitarian with our stuff, but I still think there's nothing wrong with self-expression through your hunting clothing and gear. You know, anybody who denies that they're doing that is really just full of shit. You know, guys, as an example, I wear a cowboy hat or traditional wool sweaters when hunting sometimes because they fulfill the need, but it also depicts a cowboy outfit or history that I have a lot of nostalgia for. There's nothing wrong with that, guys. So if you're, if you're you know, edged to certain types of gear because of that, more power to you. But anyways, back to the industry bias topic. The real bias, these pro teams, guide and outfitter programs, gear reviews on YouTube, gear on TV shows, creates is this overall sense of constant change. It's like they put out this, there's this feeling in the hunting business that it's like an arms race. All the hunters you look up to are have the cutting edge gear, so you must too. This is a false reality. The reality is, guys, I hate changing gear out of my setup to the point that if I see a new piece of gear show up in the business, even something novel and intriguing, I still won't try it in the field unless someone gives it to me for free or near free. This is the norm among gu the guide and outfitter community. I know 56 year old mountain guides, some of the best hunters in the world that nobody knows about, that even if you hand them a brand new $1,200 backpack, they would throw it in their closet or give it to their nephew. It's just hard to get these guys to change gear. So the takeaway I want you guys to internalize is that yes, hunting influencers or whatever you want to call them are bought off and biased by certain companies to an extent. But the real secret is that we are way better off as hunters if we realize that once we have baseline gear, the real exponential growth in our ability is going to be from experience in the field and consciously thinking about our skill set. Don't let the constant flow of gear in the market distract you. I know this is a hot topic, guys, but I want to hear your comments below. Tell me what makes you feel less of a need to keep up on the newest and greatest hunting gear. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Again, guys, thanks for tuning in the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, guys.